Good day, everyone. I am Cheryl P. Alvarez, a Bachelor of Science in Biology, second year major in Microbiology. And I'm going to report about the last topic of Chapter 4, and it is entitled, What Roles the Species Plays in an Ecosystem? So, I'll start my report with one of the important ecological principles. It states that each species plays an important role in the ecosystem where it is found. This just tells us that every species has a purpose, even the most dangerous, even the smallest, and even the ones who we consider pests. Each of them have a role to play to keep the ecosystem balanced. Also, it applies to us humans, because we are one of those species. This just reminds us that we have a purpose, that you have a purpose. Moving on. But first, what is a species? It is discussed last time that it is a group of organisms which can interbreed to form fertile offspring. Also, it is a class of individuals having some common characteristics or qualities. Distinct sort of kind. The picture is an example of different species of plants. Now that we're already familiar with the term species, let's talk about its role. Each species plays a unique role in its ecosystem, and it is called niche or ecological niche. It is a distinct role of a species that includes everything that affects its survival and reproduction. Or it can also be defined as a species way of life, or it is a sum of species use of the biotic and the biotic resources in its environment, as dictated by its evolutionary adaptation. Ecological niche includes that species' range of tolerance to physical extremes such as heat, salinity, pH, and etc. Use of resources such as food and space, physical use of habitat, interaction with other species, and the role it plays in the flow of energy and cycling of matter in an ecosystem. Everything that species is and does determines its ecological niche which can be considered its ecological position relative to other species in the same ecosystem. But ecological niche is different from habitat, because habitat, as discussed last time, is a place where an organism lives, or an organism natural address. Because ecological niche is a pattern of living of a species, while the habitat is the place where the species lives. There are two kinds of ecological niche, and it is the fundamental and realized niche. Fundamental niche is the full potential range of physical, chemical, and biological conditions and resources if there were no competition from other species or the possible niche that a species can occupy. While the realized niche is a part of fundamental niche that a species actually uses because species often compete in an ecosystem because their niches overlap, or it is also defined as the actual niche or range in which a species actually exists. Take a look at this example. Thalamus barnacles can live in both deep and shallow intertidal zones. It is their fundamental niche. Because of competition and other limitations, few species actually fill their fundamental niche, which is the balanus that narrows thalamus spatial range forcing it to occupy a subset of fundamental niche, which is the higher, drier zone, and it is called the realized niche. Why understanding the niches of species so important? Scientists are curious to understand nature, but understanding a species niche is vital to prevent it from becoming extinct. It is also useful in assessing the environmental impact of human changes in ecosystems, like clearing a forest, grassland, and filling in a wetland. Unfortunately, we have a little knowledge about the ecological rules of most species because determining the niche of a species is difficult, expensive, and time-consuming. Understanding the niches are important because it is the basis in classifying a species. There are two classification of species. It can either be generalist or specialist. Generalist species have road niches and have the ability to survive in a wide range of habitats. 
They live in many different places, eat a variety of food, and often tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions. One of its examples are the cockroaches, the ultimate generalists. They can survive in extreme conditions and have a wide variety of adaptations that allows them to avoid predation. Flies, mice, rats, white-tailed deer, raccoons, and we humans are also generalists. Here's a case study titled The Cockroaches, The Ultimate Survivor. Study shows that cockroaches have been around for over 350 million years. They eat everything, including glue, paper, and soap. They can survive in extreme temperature and radiation, and they need only little to eat. They reproduce incredibly and disturbingly fast. They have extremely good senses that enable them to evade predators. The cockroaches have been extremely successful as a generalist. The specialist species, on the other hand, have a narrow niches, are species that survive in very specific habitats and can only tolerate a narrow range of conditions and eat certain food, which make them more prone to become endangered when environmental conditions change. One of specialist example is the koala, or Pascolastus cinereus, are herbivorous marsupials that feed only on the leaves of the eucalyptus tree. That's why the range is restricted to habitats that support eucalyptus tree. Environmental disruptions, like habitat loss or effect of climate change, have a strong effect on specialist species because they cannot adapt to use other food sources or habitats as quickly as generalist species. In fact, some specialist species is declining due to human activities. The question is, is it better to be a generalist or specialist species? It depends. When environmental conditions are fairly constant, as in a tropical rainforest, specialists have an advantage because they have fewer competitors. But under rapidly changing environmental conditions, the generalist usually is a better off than the specialist. Niches can be occupied by native and non-native species. Niches can be classified further in terms of specific roles. These are the native, non-native, indicator, keystone, and foundation species. Any given species may function as more than one of these five roles in a particular ecosystem. Native species are those that normally live and thrive in a particular ecosystem. They are also called the indigenous species. Tarsiers are a good example of native species here in the Philippines. Non-native species, on the other hand, are those that can spread rapidly if they find new location with favorable conditions. They are also called invasive, alien, or exotic species, and often do not face predators and disease that would keep them under control. They may be able to outcompete native species for taking over their niches and resources. Also, non-native species are species that migrate or deliberately or accidentally introduced by humans. Some are beneficial, but others are harmful. Did you know that Philippines is the most invasive species in Southeast Asia and ranked 36th most invaded country in the world? Well, if you don't know, then news flash. Moving on, non-native species are known to be villains. Just like what we have here in the Philippines, the golden apple snail, or its scientific name Pumasia canaliculata, or the golden kohol. It is imported from South America via Taiwan in the early 1980s. They were intended to be bred and sold as food items due to their higher protein content and rapid reproduction rate. Unfortunately, the consumers didn't bite and worst, some of the snail escaped captivity and ended up in the rice fields of the Philippines, now known to be the rice fields best. But not all are villains. Some are beneficial, just like for example, in Spain, the non-native crayfish serves as prey for migratory wetland birds. 
including some endangered species. Next rule of species is the indicator species, which serves as the smoke alarms. They provide early warnings of damage in the community or ecosystem. It warns us of the number of environmental threats to biodiversity, mostly resulting from human activities. They are also used as measures of habitat or ecosystem quality. Plants and animals that by their abundance or chemical composition are able to reveal something about environment. For example, migratory songbirds in North America are declining in number due to loss of winter habitats in the tropical rainforests and summer habitat fragmentation in North America. Trout species requires clean water with high levels of dissolved oxygen, so they are indicators of water quality. Amphibians are also indicator species. They are indicator of weather, pollution, increase in ultraviolet radiation, and loss of habitat. We also have indicator species here in Panay. It is the Visayan hornbill. It is one of several forest-dependent species whose presence is indication of good forest health in the Philippines. This species lives in the rainforest of Panay, Negros, Maspati, and Guimaras. Moving on, there's a case study titled Why Amphibians Are Vanishing. This study shows the factors that affect the survival of amphibians, and these are habitat loss and fragmentation, prolonged drought, pollution, increase in UV radiation, parasites, viral and fungal diseases, climate change, overhunting and non-native predators and competitors. So, why amphibians are that important? Because they are sensitive biological indicator of changes in environmental conditions. Extinction of amphibians suggests that environmental health is deteriorating. Another one is, adult amphibians play important ecological roles in biological communities. So, Extinction of certain amphibian species could lead to extinction of other species that feed on them. Just like what I've said earlier that removing one species may bring imbalance to the system. Lastly, they are the genetic storehouse of pharmaceutical products waiting to be discovered. Compounds in secretion from amphibian skin have been isolated and used as painkillers and antibiotics and also as a treatment for burns and heart disease. So, amphibians are that important. We have two last roles of species. It is the case zone and foundation species, which helps determine the structure and functions of their ecosystem. Let's talk about case zone species first. Case zone species have a large effect on the types and abundances of other species and on maintaining balance in, within an ecosystem. A species in which other species in an ecosystem largely depend, such that if it were removed, the ecosystem would collapse. An eagle is an example of case stone species here in the Philippines, for this species is a top predator. Case stone species play several critical roles in helping to sustain an ecosystem. One is in pollination of flowering plant species by bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, bats, and other species. The other one is top predators. They feed on and help regulate the populations of other species. Examples are the alligator, wolf, leopard, lion, and some shark species. Other examples are dung beetles, which remove and recycle animal waste, aerate soil, help establish new plants, and help produce microorganisms that spread diseases. Sea otters give sea urchins from depleting kelp beds, which support a diverse community of mollusk, fish, and marine mammals. Here's another case study about case stone species entitled, Why Should We Protect Sharks? Sharks are case stone species that have been overlooked by conservation efforts because of human bias. They tend to be considered dangerous and have gone without protection despite being heavily fished for their valuable fins. Sharks are also commonly drawn in fishing nets. Shark populations have been declining since 1970s, and scientists are now calling for a ban on shark finning in international waters.
There is also a case study about why should we care about the American alligator. Alligators are the largest reptile in North America. They are declining because of excessive hunting for exotic alligator skin, meat, and sports purposes. In 1967, alligators are declared endangered species, but in 1977, they come back and once again declared as th threatened species. Why protecting caisson species is important? Because extinction of caisson species will lead to extinction of other species in the community that depends on them. Like how ecological studies shown that decline in shark population have led to decline in base scallops population in the Atlantic Ocean. Also, caisson species provide benefits in each ecosystem they belong. Like what alligators do in wet ecosystem. Their digging holds a freshwater reserve for other organisms and prevent vegetation growth in the water. Last role that species plays in an ecosystem is the role of foundation species. Foundation species plays a major role in shaping communities by creating and enhancing their habitats, which benefits the others. Examples of foundation species are weavers or known as ecological in engineers because they build dams and streams to create ponds and other wetlands, which is used by other species. Bats and birds are also foundation species because they help to regenerate deforested areas and spread fruit plants by depositing plant seeds in their droppings. Elephants because they create forest openings by pushing over, breaking, or uprooting trees, which promotes growth of grasses. Now, let's spot the difference between case zone and foundation species. Foundation species only create the foundation and beginning base for habitats and ecosystem, like how beavers that build dams. While caisson species play both this role and the prime role of keeping the ecosystem functioning and in order. That's the end of my report. Here's the conclusion. Population evolve when genes mutate and give some individual genetic traits that enhance their abilities to survive and produce offspring with these traits, or it is known as natural selection. Another one, human activities are decreasing the Earth's vital biodiversity by causing the extinction of species and by disrupting habitats needed for the development of new species. Lastly, my topic, each species plays a specific ecological role or what we call ecological niche in the ecosystem where it is found. Here's the reference of my report. And thank you everyone. Have a nice day and God bless.